Ahoy there makers, let's take a closer look at the Wireless Plasma Kit QB Edition. So this is the latest in the Wireless Plasma Kit lineup. So are you happy to be hex <laughs> hexahedral, <laughs> stoked to be six-sided, add a mysterious alien artifact to your Borg-inspired boardroom, <laughs> brutalist neon bunker, or top secret Tesseract storage facility with this comfortable chunky glass cube. It is very chunky. It is very cute. Cubic kit contains a plasma stick 2040W with the Pico W aboard, the glass bottle, the cubic glass bottle, which is 120 centimeters tall, and the five meters of WS2812 NeoPixel compatible addressable LED wire. Uh, there's 50 LEDs on this strip. And this comes with a USB A to micro B cable. And there's also some little Velcro dots so you can attach your plasma stick to the back of the uh, cube and keep everything nice and tidy. There's also the Bring Your Own Bottle Edition. And in this one, you get the Plasma Stick 2040W. You get the five meters of, of the W2812 NeoPixel compatible LED strip, which has 50 LEDs on there. And you also get the USB-A to micro B cable as well. So we've taken the Raspberry Pi Pico W and added appropriate hardware for hooking this up to the colourful string of WS2812 or NeoPixel lights without soldering, without any kind of fuss or having to worry about connectors or how they're powered. And there's also a reset button, a Quest connector, a quick QT connector for hooking up sensors and other breakouts. Everything is powered by the Raspberry Pi W Pico's USB connector. So there's no worry about extra power supplies or additional power required. Just the one cable will do the trick. So here's some of the features of the plasma stick. So it has the Raspberry Pi Pico W board, and that means that you get the dual ARM Cortex M0 Plus running at 133 megahertz with 264K of RAM. You also get the two meg of uh, onboard QSPI flash for storing your files and programs. It's powered and programmable by the USB connector on the Pico W, and it also features 2.4 gigahertz wireless, so you can connect to the internet from this device. We'll be doing that in some of the demos in a second. Compatible with five volt WS2812 NeoPixels or SK6812 LEDs. And there's screw terminals for connecting your LED strips to the plasma stick. There's also the reset button. This means it's very easy to reset your Pico W. Without that, you would have to unplug the cable, hold down the boot button, plug it back in. With this one, you just hold down the reset and boot button and away you go. It also features a Quest connector. So this is the quick stem of QT connector. And this means you can enhance your projects with additional breakout sensors and sensors with a quick or stem QT connector as well. It's fully assembled, so there's no soldering required whatsoever. And there is also fully backed by the C++ and MicroPython libraries too. So if you do want to connect a breakout to enhance one of your projects, it's very, very simple to do. All you need is the JST-SH to JST-SH cable, and that can connect to the Quest connector on the breakout garden to the Quest connector on the plasma stick. You can find a list of all the compatible breakouts on our product page as well. So about the Pico W aboard. So our new Pico W aboard products come with the built-in Raspberry Pi Pico W. And this means you get all the advantages of the RP2040 microcontroller, which is that very speedy dual core ARM processor and the growing ecosystem of all the documentation, programming methods, and so on that, that come with that. So most exciting though, the Pico W comes with Wi-Fi connectivity. And this wireless connectivity means that we can connect to other devices. We can connect to the internet and get data from other APIs. We can do all kinds of internet of things projects. So this is really, really fun. You can even host web pages on there. So let's have a quick demo. Let's uh, go over to the captain's table. Okay, so here I am on the captain's table. I have the uh, the cube just here. I've turned the lights down a little bit on the overhead so that we can see all the glorious colors from this. And as you plug this in, it's running the main.py code, which I think runs the cheer lights. If I just run that one, you can see what that looks like. Just have to get that to restart. So it'll flash a couple of times as it tries to connect to the Wi-Fi. It will go to the API, which is on the thing speak, and it'll grab the latest RGB color from the API and then set all the bulbs to be that color. This is a uh, chair lights, hashtag chair lights. And you can go onto Twitter, do hashtag chair lights and then a color. So hashtag chair lights blue, for example, and all the LEDs in the world, which are connected to chair lights will all change to that color, which is an amazing thought to think that one tweet can do that. So that's the main.py, that's the chair lights. We have alternating blinkies. Let me run this one. This will change between the odd and even pixels on the LED strip. So we can change the colors between two colors, essentially nice and simple. The next one is a fire. Let's uh, go to this one to get this nice fire effect. And it's there's quite a lot more red and yellow um, as I look at this in real life. I think there's a little bit of color correction going on from the camera there. So it looks just a little bit like orange, but uh, it's quite vibrant red and orange here. I now go to the moon. This will uh, look at what current state the moon is in and adjust the brightness compared to what that will look like now. So the brightness is currently zero because um, you know we're in the morning and the moon is not visible outside. Uh, go to rainbows. I think this is one of my favorite ones. 
This one changes in a sort of undulating pattern really gently. It's quite nice to have. I can really imagine having this one just in the background. Maybe this is what I'm going to do on the set and uh, it just creates a nice bit of ambient light. Very tempted to do the bob cube thing. I've got to put that out there. The next one is a temperature. So this can actually use the temperature sensor, which is built into the Pico and it can take a reading and then change the colors based on that temperature reading. It's currently reading about 27 degrees and these Pico temperature sensors are not 100% accurate. You can connect uh, an external temperature sensor like the BME 280 using the quick stem acuity connector and uh, that means you can then run a different program and get the temperature from there but this is just using the internal one and then the last one is weather let's try this and all these examples are available on the Pimeroni github repository run that there we go so again this is going to do its flashing thing as it connects to uh, the wi-fi and then it's going to set the leds look at the way it came brought up the colors there looks really nice based on the current uh, weather conditions so this is a kind of partially cloudy look so there we go and bring that stormy weather into the robot lab <laughs> so if you enjoy these kinds of videos electronics robotics and raspberry pi based projects uh, then you might want to check out my youtube channel so if you go to youtube.com slash kevin 28 you'll find all kinds of projects on there such as this rgb led strip project that i did looking at the plasma 2040 and i recently featured this in a video where i created an rgb led dog coat for my dog archie so i hope you enjoyed this and i shall see you next time bye for now